Welcome back to Smarty Van. Today we are in Glacier National Park. I'm Mike, and I live with my partner Shar in our 2022 4x4 spinner that we built from the ground up as a DIY home automated home on wheels. You can't talk about Home Assistant without talking about ESP Home. So many of the devices we have integrated into our van rely on ESP Home. So we're gonna get it up and running today so you can get started with ESP Home, your own devices, and integrate them into your vehicle. Let's get to work. Okay, today we need to talk, and we need to talk about ESP Home. If you've just started into all this and you've dived headfirst into Home Assistant, I know it's a lot to wrap your head around, but we really can't talk about Home Assistant in a van without talking about ESP Home. If we take a look at some of the devices in our ESP Home integration, you'll see just how many of those rely on this integration. We've got a Rickson's Heat, our motorized drawer, Max Air Fan Control, Mag Locks, got a video coming up about that soon, our freeze protection relays, exterior lights like our light bars and our chase lights, and even some electrical relays in our bench here. So as you can see, we have at least 15 of these devices running in the van, and at the core of all of them is something called a microcontroller. So each one of these runs on a device like this. This is an ESP8266 made by the Espressive company. It's basically a single core microcontroller. It's really simple. This little metal piece is the actual microcontroller, the processor here, and this is what we call a dev board. Basically, someone has taken that microcontroller and built it onto a board exposing the GPIO. That's the general purpose input and output pins from the processor. And then you see it's got a Wi-Fi antenna. And then on the back here, we see that it has USB. And this is really helpful for programming over the serial connection on this device. So this is a tiny computer, basically. It's really commonly used in the Internet of Things or smart home automation because it's small, it's cheap, it's fast, and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. So these devices come in a bunch of form factors. Anybody can take the design for this ESP chip and put it on what's called a development board. And what's nice is these often come with these pins here. You can see these header pins that allow you to put it in something like this breadboard. Then you can see we can take this, plug it into USB for the initial programming, and then take the pins and jump them with jumper cables over to devices that we're trying to test, like sensors, for instance, or lights. There's a newer big brother to this called the ESP32 that's a dual core processor with more RAM and more GPIO, but this is totally capable for what we need to do in most applications in Home Assistant, especially if we're just turning off and on some relays. Okay, so what is ESP Home? Let's take a look at their website. If you go to esphome.io, you'll see at the top, ESP Home is a system to control your microcontrollers using a simple configuration file, and then ESP Home compiles that into a firmware, which eventually uploads over the air to a microcontroller, and then allows that microcontroller to speak to Home Assistant. This website is a great resource. You're gonna spend a lot of time here because it details every component that's available on the ESP Home platform. They have a huge list of peripherals, sensors, and input and output that's available and has a component already ready to go. You just have to learn the syntax to configure it for one of your microcontrollers. So why wouldn't we just buy devices that are already compatible with Home Assistant, get them online, bring them into the van, plug them in, and connect them? Well, that works really well in a home. You might have hue bulbs or Nest cameras and doorbells, things like that. But in a van, we're gonna have some really unique things we wanna control. And it won't be long before you come up with an idea that you really need to take a very specific piece of hardware and give it control inside our home automation platform, Home Assistant. I mentioned a video we have coming up about our mag locks. And since we couldn't go to Amazon and just buy something called mag locks for van and home assistant, we had to create it ourselves. So we came up with the right magnets, and then we came up with the right way to switch those magnets, giving them power to turn them off and on. But then ultimately, we need the brain to control that and to speak to home assistant so we can turn those relays into switches, or better yet, locks in the home assistant interface. So we started with one of these. You guys have been voting on the poll on our channel page, and it's really clear that everyone wants to talk about mag locks. So we're definitely gonna do a whole video about our exact setup, which locks we chose, how we're controlling them, and the YAML for the configuration for one of these ESP processors. But today, I just wanna start simple. Let's get ESP Home add-on installed into Home Assistant, and we're gonna take advantage of the LED light that's available right on this microprocessor, and we're gonna turn it into a switch in Home Assistant so they can turn it off and on wirelessly. All right, let's dive right in. If you already followed along with the earlier video on how to set up Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi, then we can log into our server. I've renamed mine HA Demo, so some of this will seem familiar for when we first set up Home Assistant. But what we're gonna do is add ESP Home to this install. So we'll go to Settings, and we're gonna go down to Add-ons. And if you don't have any add-ons, that's okay. I have one here already called File Editor, but we'll click on the Add-on Store and we're gonna scroll down just a little bit to ESP Home and we'll click ESP Home. The first step is just to click Install. 
Okay, now that ESP Home is installed, there's a couple things we wanna look at. Generally with add-ons, it's probably a good idea to turn on the watchdog, which restarts the add-on if it crashes. And then in this case, we're gonna to wanna to show this in the sidebar, which will expose the ESP Home interface right here. All right, the last thing we need to do is click start. Okay, now that that's running, we can go over to ESP Home. And there we go, we finally see the interface. So we have no devices added yet. And that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna add a single device. We're gonna take this ESP8266 and we're gonna give it a little piece of firmware to control the LED light on board here. And we're gonna add that to Home Assistant. So let's click new device. So the first time you set up a microcontroller in ESP Home, it needs to be connected to the computer. After that, it can receive over-the-air updates using the Wi-Fi on this device. And since we're not connected to this Home Assistant install via HTTPS, we're going to have to go through the two-stage process to get this done. So we'll click Continue. And then we're going to name this device. So for today, this is going to be ESP Home Demo. Then we're going to add the Wi-Fi credentials for the network that our Home Assistant server is on. Okay, what we need to do here is select the type of device we're using. I happen to know this is a D1 Mini. So I'm gonna uncheck the Use Recommended Settings, so that'll give us all the board options available. And we know it's an ESP8266, so we'll click here. And then I'm gonna look down through, looking for the Wemos D1, R2, and Mini. So the D1 Mini is included here, and I'll click Next. Great, so this is telling us that we are ready to install this configuration on this device for the first time. And for the first time, it needs to be done via USB. So we'll click Install. And since we're not browsing to this Home Assistant server via HTTPS, I'm just gonna do a manual download of this and use the ESP Home web tool to load this via USB. So I'll click Manual Download. And what this is gonna do is download the necessary components and compile them into a firmware that we can load onto this device. Be back when that's done. And then to do the second step of this process, you cannot use a browser like Safari. We need to use something like Chrome that allows USB serial connections to devices like this. So let's go to Chrome and we'll go to web.esphome.io. And this is their tool that allows you to connect in your browser to a USB device like one of these and upload firmware to it. So I'm gonna connect my device using USB to my computer. This one's micro USB, but a lot of the more modern ones are USB-C. Okay, then we'll click connect and we're gonna choose the device here that is our USB serial device that I just plugged in and we'll click connect. All right, since we've already created a firmware in ESP Home, we're ready to install that firmware. So I'm just gonna choose the install option. I'm gonna choose ESP Home Demo, which is the firmware that we just created in ESP Home on the server. So we'll click open and then install. And so that's actually erasing this device and then loading the firmware into it. Okay, so back in Safari, we see our ESP Home Demo device is online. This device has connected to the Wi-Fi using the credentials we provided it, and it's now connected to our Home Assistant server. We no longer need this USB cable connected to our computer, except this is what's powering the device for now. So I'll leave it plugged in so it has power, and I'm gonna put it on this breadboard here so that I don't have to hold it. Okay, there we go, we have our device. During that process, one of the things that happened is that it took those Wi-Fi credentials and it stored them in a place called Secrets, which you see right here. This is an area where you can save values, like credentials for your Wi-Fi network that can be loaded into any configuration for any number of your devices and changed in one place. So if you change your Wi-Fi password, for instance, you can change it here and all of your devices will receive that in their next update. So it has added the first two credentials, the Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password that we gave while we were setting up our first device. So now we can take a look at the configuration for this ESP Home demo device. We'll click edit. And this is what it looks like. Basically, we're looking at YAML and we're looking at ESP Home syntax that allows us to configure any of these devices. So this default config really doesn't do anything yet. And what I wanna to do today is use the onboard LED on this device and give it a switch so that we can turn it off and on from Home Assistant. So to do that, we're gonna use the switch component from ESP Home. So if we go over to ESP Home and look at the switch component, and you can see here that the base switch configuration needs to define a platform, needs to have a name, and ideally it would have an icon. Okay, so let's add a switch component. Hit return, and the indent's there for us. We'll hit dash, and we need to tell it which platform we wanna use. What do we want our switch to control? In this case, the platform is going to be GPIO. That's general purpose input output. And those are the pins here on this microcontroller dev board. Okay, then we need to tell it which pin. And to figure out which pin we need, I'm gonna to go to this great reference I like to use from Random Nerd Tutorials, link in the description. This tells you all about the ESP8266 pinouts. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll find the Wemos D1 Mini that we're using. So you can see here the relationship between the screen printed numbers and the actual GPIO according to the microcontroller. 
scrolling down further, we're gonna find a best practices chart here. This kind of tells you which GPIO pins are best to use and some notes about ones that you need to look out for. What I'm looking for right now is how to control the LED that's on board this microcontroller. And if I look here at D4, which is GPIO2, I can see that this is connected to the onboard LED. So I wanna use pin D4. So we'll go back to our config here and type D4 and hit return. Something I noticed though while we're looking at this chart is two things. One, it says that this pin is pulled up. So it's sort of inverted from the normal logic. It's high by default and it's high at boot. It also notes that the boot will fail if it's pulled low. So there's two things we need to do to be able to control the LED on here without preventing this device from booting. The first thing we need to do is tell it to be inverted. So we say inverted is true. The second thing we need to do is change the restore mode. Restore mode is going to be always off. There we go. Always off means that anytime this device is powered up or rebooted, our switch will be off by default and that'll help interfering from the booting of this device. Finally, we need to give our switch a name. I'm going to call it onboard LED. There we go. Great. So there's a switch defined. So we're going to hit save. And now we need to install this new firmware onto our device. After the initial flashing of the firmware onto this device using USB-C, you can use wireless over the air updating from then on. So we'll click wirelessly. Okay, this is great. We have our first error. This is gonna happen a lot. So it says while scanning a simple key, we expected a colon here at line 34. Let's take a look. So we'll click edit and I'm gonna go down to line 34 and see that, oh yes, I made a mistake. After the pin, I did not put a space after that colon. So we'll add the space back there and we'll click save and we'll try this again. Let's click install. Go wirelessly. All right, it looks like we've passed the initial validation here. So ESP Home is now going to recompile the firmware for this device and upload it wirelessly right to the device. I'll be back with you here as soon as it's done. Looks like compiling's finished. We see some stats about how much RAM and flash are being used. And then ESP Home connects to the device over Wi-Fi and uploads the firmware. And it looks like we have a successful message. I often see this warning here that it can't connect to the device for a second. That's because it takes this device a second to reboot, join the Wi-Fi, and be available at the IP address that it's expecting. Okay, there we go. Finally, this device has connected to the Wi-Fi and ESP Home has connected to the device. So we'll see some of the log output here. This is a great place to monitor what's going on when you're writing more complicated code. You can connect to the device and look at the logs in real time. But for now, we've just made a simple switch. So I'm gonna click Stop. So our next step is to go back into our Home Assistant settings, go to Devices and Services, and we should see a newly discovered device, and we do. It's an ESP Home demo device, and that's what we called our device. So we wanna configure this device. And we'll click Submit. Great, and it says we have success, so we click Finish. Now we see we have two devices under our ESP Home integration and we'll click ESP Home and see those. The electrical relay box is one we added from an earlier video, and now we have our ESP Home demo. So let's click on this one device. Okay, great, we see the name at the top here, and we see we have controls, and we have a control called onboard LED. That's what we called our switch. So if we take a look at our device, while we flick this switch, we'll see that the light turns on. That's that blue LED at the top of the ESP8266. And if I turn the switch off, the LED goes off. Okay, so it might not be so exciting to just turn the onboard LED off and on on this microcontroller, but I think it really helps lay the groundwork of where we can go from here. So what if we wanna control something like this, a large motor controller that could drive a linear actuator or high-powered LEDs? Or maybe we wanna control a couple relays for let's say our water pump. Now we can take a device like this using the GPIO here to drive these relays. Then we have switches for those relays inside of our Home Assistant install. Suddenly, we've built our own device that can control special things in the van and brought them into Home Assistant. The next step would be to add automation, so you could have logic or one device control another device like your pump. The other nice thing you can find are boards like these. This is eight relays on a development board that already has a microprocessor on it, an ESP8266 right there. The only downside is you're not gonna find USB on this particular board. So you need to use a USB UART programmer to connect to this board to program it for the first time. But after that, all the updates will be done over the air via the Wi-Fi. We have one like this under our water bench to control all of the valves and water pumps in the van. But it's not just relays and motor drivers that you can use with ESP Home. There are tons of sensors and other components available. So take a look through ESPHome.io to get inspired. You could use temperature sensors, liquid sensors, motion sensors, and there's so, so many more. And all of these can be brought into Home Assistant to be further automated and integrated into your platform. 
So if you're looking to get your feet wet or recreate the demo that we made today, you just need a couple of things. For one, you're gonna need some microcontrollers. You can grab a bag of the D1 minis on Amazon for like 10 or 15 bucks, and I'll link to that in the description below. It's also helpful to have breadboards. They come in different shapes and sizes, but that allows you to stab your microcontroller into the board and access those GPIO pins with something called a jumper cable. These have little ends on them that allow you to stab them into the breadboard and make connections between the microprocessor and other things like sensors over here on another part of the breadboard. The last thing you might want is a set of relays or something else to experiment with. That way you can connect this to your microcontroller and then connect some kind of device to your relay to control it with Home Assistant. Inevitably, you're gonna run across the need to solder. These development boards come with header pins, but they're usually not already attached. So you've gotta drop them in the pins here and solder each pin to the board. It's really the easiest kind of soldering you can do, and it's a great place to start, but you do need a soldering iron and some solder. It's also helpful to have some helping hands to hold onto this board while you do the soldering. I'll leave links to my setup below, which was designed for a van, so I have a very portable soldering iron and a really small kit, but really, any soldering iron will do to get started. In one of our next videos, we're gonna break down our electromagnetic drawer lock system. We'll talk about the magnets we used, the device we used to drive them, and the configuration file for ESP Home. Ah, there's so much more to say about ESP Home, but that's where we're gonna stop today. So go grab yourself some microprocessors, links in the description, and until next time, safe travels.